preschool parents, welcome! I'm super excited that you are here today. My name is Zhu Xichen. I'm the preschool director at CASE. I have been in the early childhood education field for 17 years. I spend most of my time studying how to enhance young children's Chinese proficiency through inquiry-based approach. I love to engage young children's mind in deep learning and often see how children expand proficiency in language acquisition through participating actively in the conversation. Preschool children are naturally motivated to take part in playful activities and are less self-conscious about errors than older learners. It is so important for all of us, parents, teachers, adults around them to build up a meaningful and positive learning community to support their growth. At CASE, we provide a high-quality Chinese immersion preschool program. During COVID-19 circumstances, there are six cohorts and 68 children in our program. Our philosophies and goals are play-based and child-centered. We implement a developmental appropriate pedagogy and curriculum that promotes children's physical, social, emotional, intellectual development. We review and evaluate our curriculum on a regular basis. Our teachers are well trained, working under knowledgeable supervision. During the school day, we provide small groups with a low children-teacher ratio that allow high-quality interaction among teachers and our children. Teachers facilitate play to foster children's socialization and build up their agency and ownership to their own learning. Next, I would like to introduce one of our wonderful preschool Chinese teachers, Fu Laoshi, to you. In her video, she will share a preschool project supermarket. You can see how she worked with her teaching partner, Ran Laoshi, to develop a project based on children's interests and questions. During children's visit to the Whole Foods supermarket, they explore how people run a supermarket and solve real-life problems. Children ask so many questions. With the ongoing project in the classroom, Fu Laoshi was able to provide language-rich instruction that was embedded in meaningful text. She not only deepened children's knowledge by introducing outside experts, but also helped children develop social skills and extended their life experience of visiting supermarket in the dramatic area in the classroom. This learning experience in preschool support children's intellectual curiosity and help them develop strong foundations that facilitate their transition to kindergarten and elementary school. Please enjoy the story from Fu Laoshi, as I always do. Hello everyone. My name is Ting Ting Fu. The children call me Fu Lao Shi. This is my 11th year working at CASE and my eighth year teaching preschool. I have a dual role at CASE, a preschool Chinese teacher, and I'm also a CASE mom. For me, the satisfaction of being a Chinese teacher is to see a child enters our program with little to no Chinese background. And by the end of the school year, see them happy and confident, understanding and speaking Chinese. Today, I want to tell you a story about one of my students, Dylan, and his experience of a new fun project my fellow teacher and I created last year about supermarkets. So in class discussion, Dylan and his friends thought about and answered these questions in his Chinese class. 什么是超市? 谁在超市里工作? 我们可以在超市里买什么? 超市里的东西是从哪里来的? 超市里有哪些区? Here are some of the things Dylan and his friends came up with.
The next part of the project was when Dylan and his friends went on a class field trip to the Whole Foods nearby. Dylan loved the scavenger hunt at Whole Foods. He and his friends, together with parent and teacher chaperones, were so excited to talk about where they should go to find each item. And when they found each item, they were so happy. Dylan did observational drawing and interviewed one of the workers in the store. Here are some of the questions they asked. 超市里的东西是从哪里来的? 你怎么知道架子上的东西卖完了? 东西坏了,怎么办? He was so excited to share his adventures with other classmates when he came back from the field trip. And I was happy that he was so animated and he was able to express himself using the Chinese that he knew. Two days after his Whole Foods outing, Dylan met Mr. McKinn, who came to our school to talk about his experience working at Safeway. Dylan learned that there are five things we should remember in order to know where all the fruits and vegetables come from. They are farmers, trucks, warehouse, stores, and me. It was so cute to see the children turn it into a rhyme and kept saying it while they're playing. Next, Dylan, his friends, and teachers turned the classroom dramatic play area into a supermarket with the help from our wonderful parents who collected and donated a lot of um, supermarket related materials, such as milk cartons, empty containers for fruits and vegetables, empty detergent and body wash containers, a kid size shopping cart, and some toy shopping baskets. Dylan and the class problem solved to figure out how to make the classroom supermarket function. The kids figured out that they needed to have some rules like lining up to pay. They had to decide where the line should begin, how to make space for other shoppers, how to ask a teacher for help when everyone wanted to be the cashier. As teachers, we were so happy to see how much fun they were having. After a few weeks though, we observed that fewer children were playing at the classroom supermarket. So we asked them a question. What can we do to attract more customers to shop at our classroom supermarket? It was so impressive to hear their answers. They said, we can lower the price. We can add more things. Dylan suggested adding some cooked food. So the kids immediately using yellow paper to make noodles, brown paper to make bacon, and white fuel speeds as white rice. Another student, Anna, suggested to add some medicine for people to buy when they're sick. So two children use paper to make medicine. And they asked me to make some um, paper boxes for them to store their medicine. Tommy suggested adding seafood. So he used paper to make fish, shrimp, octopus, and Fulash's favorite seafood, crab. <laughs> So now we had a seafood section. We were very happy to see their enthusiasm for supermarket is back. Through this experience, Dylan learned how to do sorting, simple tallying, and asking simple questions like, 你最喜欢哪个超市? 
，你喜欢吃葡萄吗？你喜欢吃苹果吗 ？They learn a lot more about supermarkets, and they were able to、um, answer questions and、um, share what they learned in Chinese. The end. Hi everyone, and welcome. My name is Britta Pels, and I'm the head of early childhood, overseeing grades preschool through first grade. I'm also the parent of a Case preschooler and a second grader. Case holds such a special place in my heart, professionally and personally now as a parent, and I'm thrilled to be part of the team today, sharing more about our unique program with you. This is my first year in this new role as head of early childhood, and for the past eight years, I have served as Case's preschool director. As an impassioned early childhood educator and advocate, I know that the unique developmental period of early childhood does not end at preschool; it extends up through the age of eight. And I'm thrilled to be in a position now to bridge the strong foundation in joyful dual language learning that's being built in the preschool with our kindergarten and first grade programs, the place where learning in reading, writing, and math takes root. Case's commitment to providing a developmentally appropriate approach to teaching and learning was at the core of our decision to expand our early childhood division to include kindergarten and first grade. It's my pleasure to introduce you to one of our veteran kindergarten teachers, Yang Laosher, who will share with you a story about how she helps students without a Chinese language background to learn the language and find success at Case. Hello, my name is Yan Mei, and I have been teaching kindergarten at Case for over twenty years. In fact, I'm not only a teacher here, but I'm also a former parent. My son graduated from this school too in two thousand and seven. Every year, we have a new student who come in with no Chinese background at all. You will be surprised. To see how fast they can build up their confidence and fall in love with the Chinese, let me share a story of my student from last year. Julia was a new student and she doesn't have any Chinese background. When Julia walked in on the first day of kindergarten class, she was wild-eyed and unsure. She asked me in English, "How come so many kids?" Can speak Chinese. As I start class in the circle time, you can see all the question marks on her face. She doesn't understand what I'm talking about at all. She was quiet, and I could see her listening and observing. After just a few days, she started to say few words: "Ni hao, hello, 再见 goodbye." 谢谢 thank you. She began to repeat repeat the word I was introducing to the class. I encouraged her. I spent time with her one on one. I created a Chinese name for her, and she she learned her Chinese name. After one week, she started to participate in our games using the language she、uh, has learned. After only three weeks, she could speak a few simple sentences and answer questions. She was happy participating in the games and the songs that we do.、Mm. Julia and her friend have been playing with materials and pictures that the kids can see and touch. In kindergarten, we focus on listening. And speaking, this is a video I took after only three weeks of the school. 一根手指点点点，两根手指点点点，三根手指喵喵喵，四根手指爬爬爬，五根手指一朵。Soon, Julia started to speak the name of body parts. 
family and the school in Chinese loudly and also matched the Chinese characters. I could see how fast her confidence level grows. I had been teaching the concept of the counting to all the kids and the student like Julia who know Chinese are at the same time learning the numbers in Chinese. This video are after only three weeks of school. Here is another student who came in with no Chinese. I want to make sure that Julia and her friend feel comfortable to learn a second language and become motivated and eager to learn. We do everything possible and using fun ways to raise the interest of Chinese learning, such as using iPad apps. So if you don't speak Chinese, don't worry. Come to case and don't be surprised when your kids start talking to you in Chinese or singing a Chinese song after a few weeks. Thank you. Thank大家好,我叫张全华,我是中美国际学校的小学部主任. Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly Kaz and I'm the head of the lower school here at Case. This is my third year at Case and my twelfth year working in the field of education. I'm speaking to you all today from the perspective of a Mandarin Chinese learner. While I'm ethnically half Chinese, I actually didn't begin my own journey of Mandarin learning until I was in college. But here at Case, I have the distinct joy of getting to watch our students as young as three years old, approximating language and slipping nimbly into Chinese, even during moments of free play in the classroom. In just a moment, you'll be hearing a story from three of our wonderful teachers and education leaders, Ms. Reed, Xu Laoshu, and Ms. Calcagno. In addition to being um, an excellent example of the ways in which our teachers collaborate across language and discipline, this story will also highlight how students here have amazing opportunities to deeply consider their own and others' identity stories, and what it means to really bring your whole self to your school community. Students are engaged in contemporary and critical thinking, all the while developing really impressive facility in Mandarin and a view of the world that is truly bicultural. So please enjoy our third grade identity project story. Hi everyone, my name is Kimberly Reed and I'm currently the second grade English teacher. Prior to this, I taught third grade. Hi everyone, my name is Teresa. The student call me Xu Lao Shi. I'm the first grade Chinese teacher this school year. I've taught from pre-K to uh, through third grade during past 10 years at the case. Hi, my name is Christina Calcagno and I'm the English Curriculum Director. Today we are going to tell a story about Katie's experience in our identity project. In the English classroom, Katie started learning about identity by learning about the identity iceberg. Identity iceberg is used as a metaphor because most of our identity is internal, just like an iceberg. So we brainstormed with the class internal and external parts of identity and found that gender can be internal and external. Then she began to listen to parents, teachers, and people from our case community who came in to talk about their identity. She realized that identity is complex and also involves the gender spectrum, social class, and culture. Katie learned about how people have multiple identities and we cannot judge people based on their external identities. Each person has a complex story. Katie then picked three big parts of her identity to write and talk about in English. She began to write paragraphs. Right before presentation day, students reflected about what they learned about identity. 
Here are a few quotes from student reflections. In the classroom, Katie needed to learn new vocabulary to describe herself, such as outgoing, 外向 shyness, 内向 so she's able to express who she is. After she and also her friends learned some of vocabulary for this topic of identity, she listened to the teacher and parents, Chinese-speaking faculty, come into the classroom and talk about self and their own identity in Chinese. The, speaking, the speaker on the left-hand side is Adam Ross, who is our Chinese content and technology specialist and based at our middle school campus. Katie and her friend then fill out their own self-identity survey and learn how to identify themselves from outside visual appearance to the inside personality and the culture background. She wrote a short paragraph to describe herself using prompts. Katie learned that each person can have a different family background and culture. Katie practiced reading aloud her identity statement both in Chinese and English over and over again in preparation for the next part of this project. The identity project was also integrated into art and coding classes. In art, Katie created her silhouette. On her silhouette, she wrote key words corresponding to the six identity statements, three in English and three in Chinese, that she chose to write about and record. Then in coding class, students also created audio recordings of themselves reading their identity paragraphs. Next, they wrote a program using a children's programming language called Scratch and incorporated the audio recordings into their program. Here are some examples of a student's recording. Acting is a big part of my identity that feels important to me right now because I can express myself. I've been doing acting in shows for a few years. Finally, we linked the Scratch program to the silhouettes using a physical computing device called a Makey Makey. A Makey Makey is an electronic invention tool that allows users to connect everyday objects to computer programs. Viewers are able to physically interact with the silhouettes by touching the drawing, which activated the Scratch program via the Makey Makey and played the audio recordings. The secret to enabling this physical interactivity was that we applied copper tape, which conducts electricity behind the silhouettes and attached the Makey Makey to the copper tapes. The project concluded with a day on which families were invited to visit and students shared their projects. Parents learned not only about their own child's identity, but also about other students in the class. Thank you, everyone. My name is Joe Williamson, and I'm the head of the Case Middle School, which comprises grades six, seven, and eight. I'm in my seventh year at Case, my 14th year as a middle school in middle school leadership, and my 33rd year as a middle school educator. Uh, the majority of you are here because you're looking for a preschool or kindergarten, and you're probably not even thinking about middle school. Uh, however, I would like to point out that one of the few absolutes in life is that five-year-olds eventually become 13-year-olds. So I would like to suggest that you take a good look at the middle school when considering a program for your child. The Case Middle School continues the outstanding work begun in the lower school utilizing cross-curricular, project-based learning to prepare our students to move on to outstanding college preparatory programs in San Francisco and all over the United States. You may be wondering what successful interdisciplinary project-based learning looks like. Let me offer an example. Our eighth grade power project, winner of the American Library Association Social Justice Award. Here is our power project story. 
Hi, I'm Cassie Lee, the Case Middle School Learning Center Coordinator. I'm Jack Crow, and I'm the 7th and 8th grade English language arts teacher here at the Case Middle School. The Power Project was a joint project with Cassie Lee, myself, and Alice Woodman Russell, who is the 7th and 8th grade social studies teacher. This is the story of Alex, an 8th grader, who participated in the spring during COVID on an interdisciplinary capstone experience called the Power Project. The Power Project equips our 8th graders to use their power to contribute to positive change on social issues of their choice. In the case of Alex, he and his peers form groups based on their own interests and passions, and Alex's group chose anti-racism as the cause that they wished to uh, support. They, uh, they did an extraordinary job building a website, engaging with social media campaigns, and telling the story of their cause, and encouraging and creating a call to action for those who would be viewing their website. Alex and his classmates listened to a guest speaker we brought in. Danielle Koch is a graphic designer, social media influencer, and an activist who produces powerful infographics that deal with a variety of current social issues. This is what Alex said after listening to her. It was inspiring to see how she used simple but powerful infographics to spread ideas. She's a bright and inspiring artist that isn't afraid to stand up for what she believes in. Another student said, I have always had a passion for art, so seeing her, a real artist, using her illustrations to be an activist and raise awareness was really inspiring because I had never seen anything like it before. Alex also listened to an alumna who had participated in this project in the past, Cassie Ng, who has become quite an activist in her own right. Now about midway through the project, Alex and his friends presented their websites uh, to a panel of guest judges who are professionals working in a variety of fields and they offered actionable, formative, and quite insightful feedback for how Alex and his team would uh, improve and continue on their project. During this project I was able to learn and grow in many different ways. I think our group was really successful in making our infographics and posts. I think that they all looked amazing. I think that we were successful in making our website too. I think in the end, our website changed for the better because of the panelists. The panelists told us things that were really helpful and advice that we were able to take into consideration to help improve our project. Finally, here are Alex's and some other student reflections of the Power Project. The skills I've learned include collaboration, taking and implementing criticism, and website design. I think all these skills will help me in high school. Knowing how to take and implement criticism will make my work better, and it will help me understand that my work is not perfect. Until this project, I had no idea how to use Wix or any other website design tool. I believe the purpose of this project was to open our eyes to some of the social issues in our world and to learn and understand the power that we possess as children, as people of our social class, and as students from a private school. But this project achieved so much more. This project taught me the importance of specificity, simplicity, and communication. We had a long conversation on Instagram DMs about how hard it has been to use less single-use plastic, where to find bamboo toothbrushes, and our thoughts on ways to inspire others to change. We also started a challenge on Instagram, where we had people vote on who they think would have the lowest carbon footprint at the end of one week. We used an app called EcoCred to help us track it. When we reached out to them on Instagram, they actually replied and were interested to know our feedback on the app. Every job in the universe requires the skill of getting others to listen to what you want to say, so that will also be helpful. And lastly, I think that knowing that most strangers are just people like you, who are kind and willing to help, really changes everything. I'd always thought that reaching out to strangers was bad because of stranger danger, but now I don't because of personal experience. This is really helpful because I've realized that I don't need to be afraid to ask for help or advice. Alex and his friends walked away from this project and into high school empowered and hopeful. Watching him move on and reflecting 
on what he and his classmates accomplished gives me a great deal of hope about future generations and their willingness and ability to make positive change. This project is so fulfilling to work on because it gives our students an opportunity to make a difference in their own way, teaching them that we all have the power to uniquely contribute to a better world. Thank you.